and welcome to Let's Play Radiant Dawn. Um, this is sort of me getting out of the way the few videos I had left of my 0% gross LTC. Um, Dawn Dawn will be making a full finished 0% gross LTC and he actually like scored significantly better in a, quite a few areas. He also had uh, some dubious reliability at parts but you know it's LTCing. It's all about finding dubious reliability. He, so as a result, his um, LTC is going to be, was what I was working on for a long time. And now we're, that he's done with that, I figured I might as well just re-commentate all of the old videos um, I had left. So this video series will go all the way on to 3.6, which is where I ran out of will to f keep going and focused on helping Don on, mostly because 3.7 was a terrible map. Um, Alright, so 3 Prologue is like one of the silliest maps in the entire franchise. In theory, you could 5 turn this map. If you had all these silly little enemies get crit, uh, Scrimmier would actually move forward on turn 1 instead of not moving forward on turn 1, which would allow you to get one extra turn faster. So that warrior over there is a roll, and that warrior is also a roll. Um, one really frustrating thing about this map is the number of enemy stat rolls that actually matter. I still have no consistent way of knowing which stat rolls you can get and how to clear these maps in any kind of consistent way. I just kind of YOLO it and hope it works. Um, Ike is obviously like one of your better combat units on this map and is probably just, as long as he can actually double the enemies, he's going to one round things. Every other playable unit on this map other than Mia doesn't double anything. But the problem with Mia is that Mia is given like pretty crappy weapons at the start of this map and doesn't get access to good weapons until 3-2. And so she's kind of stuck. So other than, I guess, Ike and Mia, um, we get these Lagoos who sort of are really obnoxiously bad anim player units that like take so long to finish their animations it like makes the map take forever. We get access to the ballistas to help them but other than that they're sort of mostly stuck on their own. We can like manipulate a few enemies here and there but we're still like mostly stuck with whatever the Lagoos do is whatever the Lagoos do. Um, we have access to quite a few very powerful units on this map. Most notably, we have Mia, Oscar, Boyd, Getri, Titania, Reese, Reese, Soren. Like, basically everybody here except Rolf is probably some of the strongest units in the game in their respective classes. And they all actually have quite a few, like, interesting uses. Like... There's a bros triangle attack between with Oscar, Boyd, and Rolf, once you have promoted Oscar. Um, well, normally that's not really very valuable in 0% gross low turn count playthroughs. It's kind of valuable in some very niche scenarios. You can actually just crit things. Um, the... Gatri is probably the weakest of these, just because he has bad movement. Even though in a growth playthrough he's really good because he has 60% speed growth, he's just got 6 move and he has 20 speed. One thing to note just in general about units in this map, or like units in this army, is that many enemies on this map in the, for the rest of the part will have a speed doubling threshold of 24. A few of them will have 23 doubling speed benchmarks, and so as a result, um, you can't really get out of that speed deficit in a non-gross playthrough, whereas gross playthroughs can pretty easily just get out of that speed deficit and just start doubling. Uh, but it's just this is 0%, obviously we can't really do that. Um, one other thing to note about, I guess, the early GM squad is that they don't have access to a lot of money, and so you will notice that a large amount of resources were spent early getting GM units more money. Um, that's very important. So 
As far as supports go with the early GM squad, uh, the Ike Sworn support is probably the most interesting and useful. Not so much for the early game, although it's somewhat nice, but the fact that Sworn gives attack is really important for Ike, who just is oftentimes a little short of one-rounding enemies, and he's one of the few playable units that can have more than 24 speed. Mia also can have more than 24 speed, obviously, and so Mia also actually gets double benefit from support. She has a fire affinity, and so certain actions could be taken to get Mia, like if Mia gets a support with somebody with fire affinity, that's obviously really, really powerful. But even like uh, a support with some random scrub that doesn't have fire affinity is pretty nice because obviously Mia would get plus two attack, which is really is useful. Um, the worst affinities belong to obviously Getri and Titania, who have Light, which Light is not a very good affinity in the Drail Mercenaries as a result of the fact that it improves hit and defense. So defense is quite a good thing to improve, but hit isn't. The main reason hit isn't very good to improve is because Ike has three authority stars as well as having four, um, as well as the Grail Mercenaries getting access to forged weapons in 3-2. And so they'll very often have over 100 hit on basically every enemy they fight. Um, once you factor in forged weapons having 100 hit and then Ice 3 Authority Stars. Even with like mediocre 0% growth skills growth, they'll still have really high hit. So that's sort of a non-issue. The other major thing to note about like the GM squad in general, or just watching like stupid Lagoost attack, is that the GM squad has two uh, healers. So staff use in Radiant Dawn is generally not considered that big a deal. We do get access to the physics staff starting in 3-2 since you steal that from Valencia, but the thing is, there aren't very many like major staves aside from there's a rescue staff that you get in three in three endgame, which you can use in part four. But since part four is mostly route, and then tower is mostly trivial, um, it doesn't actually improve outcomes as much as you'd expect it to. But it's still a nice thing to have, and do will improve outcomes a little bit. And so, um, the rescue staff is quite useful. So here I'm making an oopsie and uh, just didn't remember my enemy positioning, but it doesn't actually matter. This map is so trivially easy that like you can screw up 150 different ways and it doesn't actually like impact how the map plays out. Um, one frustrating thing about this map though is you have to like constantly be moving forward with all your playable units just to like get to the stupid square in time. And while it seems like it would be fine and fun, I find in practice, because of all the en invisible enemies and all the random stat variation making quite a significant difference as to who doubles what enemies, um, a lot of the time you're just like hoping that certain enemies rolled and the got the stat rolls you wanted and didn't get the stat rolls you didn't want them to. Um, but yeah, that's just par for the course, I guess, with this sort of map. The combat on this map in particular is mostly about like two-shotting enemies with like series of chips rather than just like one rounding. Uh, that's sort of going to be a theme a lot of the time, even when playable units become scrub squad units, essentially. Like, you'll have a lot of maps, which this map is actually a pseudo route map because you oftentimes will want to... Um, route the entire map due to Scrimmier's AI being horrible. And so Scrimmier actually wants to, for some reason, attack things instead of clearing the map objective. So as a result, you, the player, will try to kill enemies so that the, uh, so that Scrimmier will actually finish the map for you.
this clear in general when I did it. I just sort of like bungaed and didn't think. I don't actually know like a consistent way to beat this map. I'm not convinced that like consistently beating this map is actually like a strategically viable option due to how many freaking like enemies are invisible and you don't remember which ones are where and they just like move in the shadows and you just like where did you move? It's a lot like 3-6 in that way. But 3-6 is at least somewhat consistent because you have access to the torch and the torch staff. But like in 3... Whereas in this map, you don't have access to the torch item. So you just are like stuck hoping that your playable units actually kill all the things. So now, turn five, we have uh, basically one more turn after this where we have to kill a bunch of enemies. So we need to get Titania to, we want to reveal the boss if possible on this turn, which is sort of a very key thing to do because the boss is revealed on this turn. Obviously we have a lot easier time getting to the boss. Um, you want the Lagoos to kill the enemies in the way on this turn and then you want the uh Bayorks on the next turn to kill the uh non to kill the boss so that way Scrimir will actually like seize on this turn on the following turn on turn six. Scrimmer is just such a frustrating unit. So there, I actually finally revealed the stupid enemies um, by shoving Mia once. So now, what should happen is that on player phase of this turn, on other phase, a bunch of Lagoos are going to walk up and kill all the stupid um, generals in the crap. So Scrimmier annoyingly kills that guy instead of killing a general, which was kind of my fault for not killing him, but I don't know. Generals are far more important to kill. Alright. There really aren't very many interesting things to talk about on this map. I just hate this map. Okay, so... The final turn of this map, we have to actually route the map, weirdly enough, because if the map isn't routed, um, Scrimmier will use his ridiculously dumb AI and just not and just kill something instead of trying to complete the map on time, which, yes, Scrimmier is really that stupid. Um... So here, Ike can thankfully one round that silly enemy, and we get to see Ike's stats. So, Titania is going to poke at this guy, and then we can finish him off with Mia. Uh, Mia wants to get the kill because the more EXP on Mia, the better, since Mia is actually one of the better promotion targets. Um, This is me, like, messing around with square counting. Uh, what I need to do here is I need to shove Shinon twice. So that Shinon can kill the silly general in the way. Yeah, I realize it. And then Mia can finish off the boss, and that will let Scrimmer seize.
which ends chapter chapter three prologue in six turns. All right.